Well, look what the ship's cat dragged in. He's only gone and built his own freaking space game. And I know, I know, it looks cool and all, and everyone's super duper hyped. But, let's all slow down a little bit and break things down and see what we're dealing with here. Alright guys, right here. And I know I'm very late to the party. But I just wanted to let things settle down to make sure I wasn't judging things in my hype fueled state. So today we're going to look at this new trailer for Squadron 42. This is some of the very first proper insights we've got into this project as it's been kept very hush hush and I've got to say they are not messing around when it comes to this reveal. This comes hot on the heels of the launch of Starfield. In fact if you like many other people, bought Starfield, then you might be just about finishing that up and realising you quite like a bit of space related gameplay and might be looking around to see what else could satiate that unquenchable thirst for vacuum. So the timing here is very telling. CIG aren't daft. And this is pretty much what I heard when Chris Roberts responded the claims about Starfield being a competitor to Star Citizen, he said, this will just bring more people into the genre, knowing full well at the end of the day it was going to be more money in the bank. And my god, what a reveal. And as probably a lot of us have done by now, we've seen how people from outside the Star Citizen sphere are seeing the sort of level design work that the project is kind of aiming for. And they are pretty much seeing for the first time that this is essentially the first first person space game that is entirely pretty much dedicated to realism. And by that I mean mostly in the aesthetical sense. Like you've got your No Man's Sky and you've got your space engineers etc. And they're not realistic looking at all really. Elite is closer but still quite cartoony in a lot of ways. Same with Halo and things like that. There will be a few examples out there people can point to for sure. But that's what I want to talk about first. Is how much of a jump this trailer is. From anything anybody had previously seen. The goal of Star Citizen and Squadron has always been thoroughly grounded in realism. And that is really starting to show. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think the visuals would ever really like trick anybody into thinking this looked like real life or anything like that. That's not really what I'm trying to say. But the art direction and the lighting and things like that all combine and together with the scale of things and the environment to really create this rather solid looking place. More than that though, it's actually sometimes over and above what we've seen in games so far. I mean, some of the character work is maybe a bit iffy, Mark Hamill's eyes were a bit too watery etc. Maybe just the lighting being a wee tad off, but it definitely still fits in and is believable etc. But it was more the places that we see, that we'll get to inhabit, fly or walk around in. They are just absolutely off the chain. Like, there's a hangar scene where there's a guy refueling and another guy just pushing a ladder around. And obviously that sounds quite simple, but I just like melted into a puddle of my own excited pee. And, <laughs> like, I'm being honest here, I literally couldn't believe this was all in game. And that's quite similar to a lot of the sentiment I got from around the internet as well. You know, it was, looks good for a cutscene. And, you know, like, show me some in-game footage. And you're sitting there like, oh my dear child. <laughs> like, this is the real deal. And then we've got that soundtrack. Like, oh my god. That fucking 
Rocky soundtrack. Now, like, I admit, I don't normally pay that much attention to the soundtracks in games. That's probably a good thing. It means you're immersed, usually. But there's times when I'm playing Star Citizen where you're brought up short because you'll be doing something and you'll see something. Could just be, like, a sunrise or whatever. And your brain just flicks to the music for a second and it's like, holy mother of... <laughs> like, you get the idea. There's a marriage there that speaks above just blending in. It adds to. It enhances the game. And Squadron 42 looks to blow things out of the water in this regard as well, by the sounds of it. And that leads us into talking about the atmosphere. And I mean, like, this thing is dripping. And it's that realistic art direction that I was talking about, combined with the music. Like, this scene here where you're creeping about and this thing flies past. Or this scene where you're waist high in the water. Or like when you explode out of quantum above this vortex. It definitely looks like it's going to seriously be capable of drawing you right into that world. What else was cool was when they showed you the latest passes on the characters' faces and the tears and the sweat and everything. Again, without that level of detail, without that realism, that would have been a lot harder to portray. You can really turn up the grit, turn up the struggle, you know, the sense of discomfort. But yeah, the tone seems to have been hit squarely on the head. I'm struggling honestly to think of any negative elements that I noticed in the atmosphere department. So, I mean, let me know what you think and try and really go out your way to find something you think was a bit off. Because I think I'd, like, literally be forcing one in there just for the sheer sake of argument at this point. I mean, narratively speaking, we can infer a few things. But there's not much we can really go into based on what we've seen. We can say what roles people might play and we're definitely not in a position to be judging the story or the performance of the characters, etc. But we can say we've joined the Navy, I suppose. We're probably joining the 42nd Squadron, <laughs> right? I don't even know if that's true, but uh, I half don't want to spoil any of the details either for myself or for you, so I decided not to poke around too much. Given some of the locations we've seen though, it will be interesting to see how much free will we will have versus how much will be on rails. I'm guessing some of the on foot sections will be primarily guided along with narrative prompts and the like. And because you're in the Navy, I've often wondered about how the game will tackle your desire to just go off track and explore other parts of a planet. Or even, like, another whole planet entirely. I mean, in real life, it's not like you could just take off in an F-22 from a US carrier and just bugger off to China to see the Himalayas or something, right? There's kind of <laughs> implications there. And I'm torn between wanting that sort of gameplay to be available and, well, not. Some exploration would be cool here and there, and I don't mind if that's at a pretty decent scale, like, say, a moon. But for the single player to remain in that narrative-focused bracket, I'm half hoping, for once, that I'm just getting told what to do, like any good marine would. And I feel like that's a bit of a strange thing to say. But I think, ultimately, that streamlining will allow for so much extra polish on that main path through the story. Also, while we're talking about story, how or what's the consensus right now on how that will all work? Will it be like a mass effect thing where there's dialogue sections that you can pick certain things to say and it can change certain outcomes? And is everyone okay with that? Are we hoping for something else? Something a bit more original? I've no idea what that would look like, but again, I feel drawn towards a more linear option for some reason like a story just set in stone or so that you're just another brick in the wall another cog in the machine we're not the hero we're not the master chief 
or just a small story in the timeline of events. What do you guys think? I get the feeling I'm way off in these expectations for some reason. And that's fine, because we're just spitballing here. And perhaps even there's definitive answers to these questions and I've just not done enough research. Which wouldn't be the first time. To be fair though, to not follow in the footsteps of all the games that came before it would be a big ask. And it could end in disaster really, let's be honest. And we have seen some of the mechanics playing out and they all seem relatively grounded. All standing on the shoulders of giants etc. The FPS combat definitely doesn't look like anything new, right? Then there's a gravity gun moving things around to solve puzzles etc. That's all pretty well trodden ground. I mean, they didn't have star ropes and pulleys and stuff, but still, there's essentially nothing there that we've not seen before. So there's definitely a possibility that there's a deficit there, or a negative, you could say, that mixed in with your spectacular light and sound show, you've had to put a guy loading a barrel into a filling station, or weighing down a lift. I mean, don't get me wrong, the primary gameplay is going to be a cinematic experience where you mostly shoot things either from a spaceship or on foot, or possibly even a boat. And that's all good, and that's, like, I'm really glad that that's the game, and it's not trying to be something else, like a puzzle platformer or whatever. But it is a little bit worrying, you know, just, just like a little bit. Just like that tiny little bit of your brain which might just be trying to tell you this looks, sounds amazing, but what if the gameplay is rubbish? Right? But I'll be honest with you, like this trailer blew me the f away. And even if it was nothing but a walking and flying simulator from beginning to end, I'd still play it. Just for that visual experience alone. And it definitely had some emotion to it as well, like there's a big emphasis on story and I don't think they will have dropped the ball in that regard. I definitely got a quiet sort of sadness about the whole thing, starting right off the bat with the Gillian Anderson scene in the beginning. I suppose we'll just have to wait and see, but I can imagine quite a few middle-aged gentlemen crying into their beards before it all comes to a conclusion. Overall though, the game does look very souped up compared to its MMO counterpart. Everything is a lot more refined and stable. The lighting and combat and animation looks absolutely stunning. The voice acting and motion capture look like it's been a massive undertaking, with no expenses spared. If I was to speculate about what's actually going to be the central conflict in the game, it's probably going to be something like we start out doing a few missions against some bandits or the like. Then we get introduced to the game's main adversary, which going by the trailer is likely to be the Vandal. I get the feeling there will be an even greater underlying threat on top of that, some sort of threat to the galaxy or something, you know. One of those things. But that's obviously simply pure speculation and like I said, I half don't want to know to be honest. I haven't researched it. I don't mind getting corrected or finding out chunks of lore from you guys, so feel free to fill me in. As far as I'm concerned, you guys are all citizens, so this could just be a conversation we had at the bar in Lorville one day. Uh, it counts as a canon event. Simple as that. There are several sequences of clips where I'd love to speculate about. For instance, like that big circular rotating room where there are like spiky electric things everywhere. Or the one where you're with the old man and there's lots of pod things flying around on a rail. I mean there's quite a lot to unpack there and I would love to like theorise what we could be looking at there. Also how long do you think it's gonna take? I know no one really knows but I'd be a bit cautious of anything past say two years. I think at that point, they're going to start looking at it again and thinking, you know, this could do with a little updating or modernising, or we can add this new type of path traced freaking nose hair or whatever. And I just think, you know, it's never going to be good enough. 
I had really hoped to see like a concrete date to be honest. Even with a disclaimer that it can be moved and put back further or even brought forward if it was deemed necessary. At least that way we know we're in the final stretch, we're coming in for a landing. But you know, let me know what you think. What was your standout part from the trailer? I think mine's was that end of that jump where they were above the big hole in the clouds above a planet. That was just, whoa. Just like, whoa. Were there any standout action sequences or set pieces to you? How's your anticipation level for the game? Do you think it's going to change gaming forever? Do you think it will come out to a small parade from the dedicated fans and then ultimately flop? Did you notice any little easter eggs or any hidden details that you'd like to share? Is there anything that you felt remained unanswered? Or was left mysteriously out. Get stuck into the comments section and let's talk about them and their implications. And have a right good old chin wag. Hope you enjoyed this vid. Remember like and subscribe. A big thank you to my Patreons and channel members Nils Gerdes and Laura Spence. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. If you want to sign up for Star Citizen use one of the referral codes on screen. Or by becoming a member or a patron, you can get your own code displayed on the end of my videos. Thanks for watching, guys. 07.